Can you actually edit 4K RAW over 10 gigabit Ethernet? Let's find out. My name is Damien Cooper and welcome to Monkey Fix. We've got some fresh new young talent doing some things that I know you haven't heard before. One, two, three, listen. So when it comes to large and fast storage solutions, there's a bunch of products out there, like the one we recently um, reviewed or other RAID systems from other companies. But when it comes to editing on one of those with multiple people at the same time or even working over the network, then your options are really, really limited and start to become really, really expensive. So today we're going into detail about one product that promises to do all of of this so let's find out if it actually works so I will warn you ahead of time this is probably a really complex and long review of that machine because it is a complex product and we used it for about seven or eight months now and there's a lot of variety to it so let's just start right ahead and dive right into it let's just start by saying why do we need this the thing is bell and i we are both editors and we both edit the same project sometimes she does more of the youtube behind the scenes stuff i do most of the client work but she does client work herself as well so we need to have access to all of our files uh, at the same time most of the time. And since we have a lot of files, that becomes really tricky. Because one option would be to just rock around with SSDs all the time and then with the backup solutions and all that, it becomes really tricky because maybe you missed something or you don't know which one is really working on which project right now. So having a centralized storage system where both of us can access all these files at the same time is really, really cool. But like I already said, this becomes really tricky and really pricey most of the time. And here is this little fairly inexpensive product by QNAP and it promises to do all that. So the smaller version we have features four bays that you can insert four typical 3.5 inch hard drives into. And you can choose whatever you like. You can do inexpensive eight terabyte drives, but you can also go crazy and put in four 14 terabyte uh, Seagate drives, for example. And having that in a RAID 5 configuration would amount to 42 terabytes of direct attached storage for multiple people to work on, which is pretty crazy if you think about it. So what is so cool about this QNAP NAS? The thing is, it's not only a NAS, but it's also a DOS. What does that mean? So a NAS is a network attached storage system. And that means what it says, you can actually access your storage through the network. But it is also a DAS, which means a direct attached storage system. So you have the option to hook it up to your computer, uh, computer directly. So you can directly work off that with a little bit of a twist, but I will get into that later. So the unit features two Thunderbolt 3 ports. So in this case, this isn't just to daisy chain the machine, but you can actually hook up two computers at the same time and both of these computers will have access to the device at the same time, which is usually pretty much unheard of. And I think as of right now, this is the only, if not one of the only machine that can actually do this, except for its bigger brother by QNAP itself, but I haven't seen any other companies have the ability to actually hook up multiple computers to the same device via Thunderbolt and work off it directly. The device also features two one gigabit ethernet ports that you can hook up your computers to as well and one 10 gigabit ethernet port. So if you really wanna have it in another room or you wanna have some client that is in another room um, have access to it as well, then yes, this one works as well. And now let's put a disclaimer out there because the device actually uh, advertises that you can hook up two computers via Thunderbolt and that it actually works as a DAS system. But when in reality, that isn't 100% true. Yes, you can hook up two computers via Thunderbolt, but what we found out is that this isn't a real Thunderbolt connection, but it's an emulation of a Thunderbolt Ethernet version. So it basically uses the Thunderbolt protocol as an Ethernet um, connection to establish connection to the device. Why does that make a difference? The thing is that both of these Thunderbolt ports inside of the QNAP has their own IP address. And 
that does make a difference because usually when you hook up an external hard drive via Thunderbolt to your computer, it gets displayed as one external hard drive. And that is just it. But when it comes to an ethernet like a NAS system, then it does have its own location. So when Bell and I are working on the same project and we use Final Cut for example, but you could use uh, Premiere Pro or Resolve as well, then what happened to us is because I'm mounting all the files on my Thunderbolt port that I'm connected to, it is a different location than when Bell opens up the same project on her computer and connects to her Thunderbolt port. Because now the computer thinks that these files are located on a different address that is my Thunderbolt IP address. So what usually happens is that you need to relink your files most of the time when working with another editor on the same project, which usually is pretty fast, but this is an annoying step and it's not really advertised uh, when it comes to the system, so keep that in mind. Another difference is also when it comes to local attached storage and network attached storage is for example if you delete something on your external hard drive then it usually goes to your uh, trash bin, trash can, whatever. So if you don't really uh, want to delete it then you can just recover it from your trash can. But on a network attached storage system you don't have that option. You could have a recycle bin on the network drive itself in space but if you don't have that and you delete something on your NAS, then it's just deleted completely. So that is a difference when you're working with multiple editors and one of these makes a user error and deletes something that shouldn't have been deleted, then if everything isn't set up correctly, then that file is gone. So keep that in mind. Let's come to the installation process. And this is fairly straightforward and you have different options to actually install this NAS device. You can hook it up to your router and as soon as the a device has internet, you can actually uh, type in the address on the internet to this machine and set it up right there. But you can also directly attach it to one of your computer and install it from there. It comes with a software that's called QFinder and that is basically your gateway to connecting and managing and connecting to all the network drives uh, when it comes to the QNAP. Bridge is fairly straightforward, it works, it does what it's supposed to do. So. That's cool. So after you have installed everything, you set up your RAID system as you would do with other RAID systems, you now have this uh, external storage system either on your Ethernet or your Thunderbolt port. And with QFinder, you can now directly mount your network drives that you want to work on. And here are things that are a little bit tricky. It comes with network protocols. Even if you're using Thunderbolt, you have the option of using different protocols. And I won't get into this in too much detail because this would even be too complex even for this review, but you have different options. For example, an SMB, which is more on the Windows side. You have NFS, which is a file storage system more for Linux systems, but Final Cut works best with an NFS system. And the really cool thing about this machine is that it does have an optimized network protocol especially made for Final Cut users. And since we're using Final Cut, when uh, having it hooked up to Thunderbolt and you choose a protocol, always choose uh, the NFS optimized for Final Cut protocol because this will definitely give you the best experience. Disclaimer, it's not the fastest, it's actually the slowest of the bunch, but since Final Cut is really complex with its reading and writing at all times, this one will still give you the best option. When it comes to mounting your drives over the network, you won't have that option for some reason. And I just found that out later, uh, which is a little bit annoying um, because now you have to make a decision if you want to mount it via SMB or via NFS protocol. But again, won't get into detail about all these network protocols, what they do and what they don't. That information you probably have to find somewhere else. Maybe I can do a video about that in the future too. And now let's talk about speed. And there isn't really a general rule of thumb as to what this machine is capable of because of the different protocols. Because we tested it with most of the protocols um, and comparing it what it can do speed wise. So let's start off with the NFS Final Cut protocol when attached directly to your computer. 
And here, like I already said, this is pretty much one of the slowest connections, but it still gives you 300 megabytes per second read and 300 megabytes per second write speeds. And that is plenty enough to edit one or even two streams of 4K raw video from pretty much any camera out there. You could even edit 8K or raw video from a RED camera directly over um, the Final Cut protocol without a problem. So the next thing we tested was the SMB protocol over Thunderbolt. And here the read speeds gets way higher. It actually doubles the speed when it comes to the NFS uh, protocol we were using earlier. So the write speeds, interestingly enough, plummeted a little bit. So now we are at around 250 megabytes per second, whereas the read speeds went up to about 600 megabytes per second. And essentially what you want to look for in a RAID is more the read speeds than the write speeds because you want to get your data and you want to, you know, read your data as fast as possible because you're not writing as fast on that machine unless you're transferring files. So if you're using Windows, I would strongly suggest using the SMB file and then you're even at twice the speed. So the next thing we tested was the generic NFS protocol over 10 gigabit ethernet. And here the write speed went down by a little bit up to like 250 megabytes per second, but the read speeds were still the same at over 600 megabytes per second. And we also tested this by transferring some files over ethernet and the speeds were really crazily fast. So if it comes to working over the network, this worked totally fine for us. But we didn't stop there and we actually wanted to have a real world use. So here's something for you to see. So here's an interview we shot for a client in Las Vegas last year and we used our Canon C100 and shot in Canon RAW light. And that is a one gigabit per second codec. So that means that each second of this clip amounts to around 125 megabytes per second. So in order to be able to actually play back this file in real speed, we need at about 125 megabytes per second of data rate. So let's play this back in Final Cut and see if the network throughput actually amounts to that. And we did that with uh, over the 10 gigabit ethernet as well over Thunderbolt. This worked totally fine. But we didn't stop there. The next thing we did was, because that is what we usually do when it comes to client work, we have a two angle interview setup. One close up, one wide angle. So here this is pretty much the same clip again. So we cloned it, we put it in a multicam sequence and now we're actually in the multicam sequence viewer. We are trying to uh, display both videos at the same time and in theory the throughput now should be double, right? So let's play this one back. And here you can see it is actually around double. So again, no problem. We tested this over 10 gigabit ethernet as well as over Thunderbolt. So this machine has no problem displaying a multicam sequence of two one gigabyte per second 4K raw files at the same time and added them over 10 gigabit ethernet or Thunderbolt. So for this test, this is really, really cool. So like I said, we had this machine in use for about seven months, but I have to put a disclaimer out there again. The network speed pretty much depends on your other hardware. Do you have a switch intact? What's your network card in your computer? And what's your operating system? Because we tried that about a year ago with another QNAP 10 gigabit ethernet rate, and it really didn't work. And why? I'm not 100% sure. I think it's a mixture of the drivers and uh, not all of our computers have native 10 gigabit ethernet. So we had external Thunderbolt to 10 gigabit ethernet solutions and some really work well, some are way slower. And now that we have the new Mac Mojave, uh, this really runs quite fast, smoothly, without a problem at all. If you're a Windows user, I haven't tested this on Windows, but in all honesty, as much as I like uh, Apple when it comes to networking, I think that Windows still has the upper hand. And if you're on a Windows machine, you should have no problems whatsoever editing over 10 gigabit ethernet uh, with the QNAP machine or other QNAP machines. What else do we have to talk about in this review? 
So lastly, let's talk about some other features because that thing is crazily packed with features when it comes to their own NAS software. I think it's a Linux based software and it provides uh, its own backup solution. It has its own um, storage file system inside. You can directly copy something by plugging in a USB 3 drive. You have a lot of stuff. You can even set up your own server uh, that you can have access to your files on the internet wherever you are which is pretty cool but I don't really have a lot of experience with any of this because we have our own storage server that I will do a video on pretty soon so we didn't use any of these features just you know they were there and this is one thing like we haven't had this in use for seven months now and it worked really really well the thing is why we're not using it anymore is because we just ran out of space. Four base is just not enough for us. So we built our own storage server with way, way, way more terabytes. But if you can go along uh, with a little less space or for example, like I mentioned earlier, if you just want to go crazy and put in 14 terabyte drives, then this is a really, really great solution for a team of one person or even two editors at the same time. So I hope this review helped you make a decision about your future needs because this topic was driving us crazy because we needed to find a solution where Bell and I could edit at the same time, have a centralized storage system and even work over the ethernet because we really, really hate having some loud machines in our office. And this is definitely a solution that works and it's way, way cheaper than if you go to other brands and they charge you 10 to 20 to 30,000 for a storage system um, that pretty much does the same thing. Granted, they probably do it a little bit better, but we had no issues, it worked, so this is fine. We used this for half a year, and this is definitely a product I would recommend. So, I hope you like this review. Consider subscribing to see more reviews on um, storage systems, as well as our storage server that is coming up, and I see you on the next one. Like damn, can't get enough of this more like I don't need no. Right.